Okay, we are going to continue learning the Sefer Yimei Shmuel about the life of Rabbi Shmuel Horowitz. Actually, just a little bit of news. So they actually just reprinted a new Sefer Yimei Shmuel with a lot of corrections and a lot of new information. Um, I did get my hands on it, but since we already started this one, we're going to continue in this one. And maybe when I catch up with another one, we'll you know start from there. But right now, we're just going to continue this one. In the last video, we were talking about how Rabbi Shmuel found, started finding um, breasts of um, Svarim, and he started doing Isaac and Sifrei, Rabbi Nachman, and everything was good. So now, let's keep on going. So we're in Parak and Gimel, chapter 53 of the Sefer Yimei Shmuel, Chiyat Aleph. Rabbi Shmuel says, V'haklal shva Isa choyrif asakti harbe b'sifrei Rabbeinu zichrenu l'vacha. He says, in that year, Sorry, in that winter, I learned a lot of Rabbi Nachman Svarim. I also borrowed secretly from Rabbi Yitzhak Tavriel, who was the guy who had Svarim, who I talked about before. There was a sefer there called Tzfilois Vitachanunim from the Tshirin Rav. And Rav Shmuel thought that this was the sefer Lekutei uh, Tfilos from Rabbi Nachman, but obviously that wasn't. And I felt, and Rabbi Shmuel says that when I read these tefillahs, I felt great chiyas and everything. And this was Erev Zayin Adar. Zayin Adar is the yard side of Moshe Rabbeinu. And we were talking about Rabbi Nachman. And he told me that he has the Sefer Lekutei Tefillahs and Lekutei Alachos. I said to him, well, isn't this the Sefer I just got called Tfilos Vit Tachanunim? And he said, no, this is, this, is, this, is, this is something different. And he showed me the Lekutei Tfilos. And he said that now this night is going to be Zayin Adar, which is the day that Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, that I should go to Meron, and I should say there the whole entire night all the Tfilos from, from uh, Lekutei Tfilos. And I took it, and I went to my house to prepare myself to go to Meron, because obviously back then they would walk, whatever, it was a whole thing. But my mother was very scared, and she did not want me to go to Rabbi Shimon. It was a crazy rainy day in Adar, and it was windy and stormy, and it was cold. <clears throat> and, he said, and, and on that day, actually, there was one Svardi person, who was going on the way and he got hit by lightning and him and his donkey were killed and they brought him to be buried in the air spot so my mother was very scared of me going there but i said to my mother i'm not going to meron i'm just going to learn in our shul and this is the base medrash chabad where his father was the rav or whatever um yeah, so I went to the to the to the shul of Chabad, and all the time my mother was sending my brother to see if I was actually really there, <laughs> um, or she would also come if I was there. And I tied the my tefillin bag under my arm. I mean, on, on my arm, under my clothing. Because uh, so if my mother sees me walking somewhere, then she would say, "Oh, why are you bringing your tefillin?" And you know, I could just say I was going on a little walk. And I started going to Meron. And when I was on the way, I met there Rabbi Tzvi Hirsch. Sorry, Rabbi Tzvi Shamosh. He was the guy who would always make the fires in Meron. And other people were with him. <clears throat> and I, we started going by foot. We couldn't get a donkey. And Baruch Hashem, we made it peacefully. And we came there in the evening time. Um, and we slept there. I said some Lakute Tfilos because I couldn't say a lot because I was very tired and it was also very cold. Um, I didn't say a lot. And we made a and we made a hadlaka and we danced there. Right? People go to People go to Meron on Zayin Adar and make like a thing there. Even uh, even today. And, and so they slept there that night. And then in the morning we daven. 
And then a lot of people came from Tzvas, and we all came back to Tzvas. And from then on, I always started saying Likute Tfilois, but I still didn't feel the greatness of these Tfilois until later on. When I said, how could there be Tfilois in this world like this and nobody knows about it? And then I started going every every Arab Ashkhajish to Meroin and to to save the uh, to do a lot of the uh, sorry, a lot of the Tfilos there and his flavors and everything like that. He says this so he basically he says this he says that this winter I was being Isaac and a lot with Tfilos and his flavors and learning Rabbi Nachman's farm and things were good. And also, the, the, uh, somebody came to Tzvas, Rabbi Ben Sion, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Ben Sion Yadler, near Yerushalayim. He was a maggot. He would tell stories and things like that, and and give you know speeches. Um, and I also helped him collect money for Jews in Russia. I helped him with that mitzvah. And the Shmuel Harwood saying that I was doing a lot of mitzvahs. I was doing a lot of things. Um, and also in this winter. The Chacham Rabbi uh, Rabbi Rifal Antebi, he was also Niskarev to Rabbi Nachman through me because I would bring Sifrei Rabbi Nachman to that shul, which is the shul the Tzadik Halavan, which I think I spoke about in a different video. It's the shul of Rabbi of the of the Tana Rabbi Yosef Bana, who's actually buried in the shul, and they call it Tzadik Halavan because different story. Maybe one day we'll say that, and we would say all the time. We would and we and we would stay up a lot every Thursday night and learn. <clears throat> and Rabbi and he said, Rabbi 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 Rafal and Tebi said that he loves the Svarim of Rabbi Nachman and he wants to be Miskarev to Rabbi Nachman, but he wants to see him first. And Rav Shmuel was like, I don't know, you know, he's not alive, you know. And afterwards, in the middle of us learning, we both fell asleep, we dozed off a little bit, whatever. And he woke up quickly, and he said he saw. He was in a great palace, a beautiful palace, and he saw Rabbi Nachman there, sitting on a chair, surrounded by his students. And because of my great fear, I ran out of the house, and that's when I woke up. And afterwards, he became close to Rabbi Nachman, and he would spend every day many, many hours learning Likut Imran and saying Likut Etzfilos and doing a spoiled this. And he, and he would say Shi'urim for the Sephardim and Tzvas in Likut Elachis. That's pretty cool. Now, the winter passed, and my father had gone at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the winter to, to, to America. And I became very close to my uncle, Harav Chosid Rabbi Avner Shlita, and he helped me a lot with my Avoid Hashem. Um, and it was because of him that I started meeting other Hasidic brass of other brass of Hasidim. Because he would let people sleep in his house, and he would also let Brasov sleep in his house when they would come from Yerushalayim or other places, right? And this was, and because of that, I was able to start meeting Brasilers. Okay. And he's talking about how he's uh, that he was that he was trying to get his hands on all the different svarim and everything like that. And also, he started having a lot of yearning to go to Uman to go to the caver of Rabbi Nachman. But he didn't. He said that he didn't even know which country it was in. He said in the Tikkun Klali that he had, it wasn't printed where he was buried. Hold on one second. So he wanted to do that as well, and then he said. We also had, at that time, we also had a lot of sufferings because we were waiting to receive a telegram from my father because he went to America. We, we wanted to hear from him. Um, 
and already a lot of and he said and he says already a lot of time passed and also it was already past uh, Shabbos Hagadol, which is the Shabbos before Pesach, that we did not hear from him, and we were when we were and we were in great distress because we read. I don't think this is it. Uh, this is what I thought. It says when I first time, the first time I read this, actually, I thought that he was talking about the Titanic, but it wasn't. I think the Titanic was later on. But he says that because we read in the newspaper that there was one boat that was on the way to America, and a big iceberg, or he calls it a har shell, it came, and everybody sunk and died. But I don't think he was talking about the Titanic. That would just be interesting, you know, because the history and stuff like that. Pesach Azlan Hashem Baruch. Shall keep on the telegram. We got a telegram from my father, and we were very, very happy. And afterwards, we received a 10 page letter from my father of what they went through um, that they were going on the boat and they went for a certain time. And there was a great storm. Um, and the captain, they were, they were going to throw. Like they were mamish going all over the boat, going crazy, and they were trying to figure things out how to get the water off the boat because the water was getting filled. Everybody was like crying and everybody was laying in their beds. And on Friday, my father fell asleep. Well, this is when he was still on the boat. And his father came to him in a dream. He said, What are you doing sleeping? Get up and call out to Hashem. He woke up. And he started saying all of the Tehill and Pasik by Pasik with great chiyas and tears. And then he fell asleep again. And then his father came to him again. And he said, what are you doing? This time his mother came to him in a dream also. And Hashem helped him. And the storm got quiet. Now, but the problem was that they also went backwards. The storm pushed them back a long time. And afterwards, there was there was and afterwards there was another great thing that happened, another great danger that happened. That the whole entire night, the sailors were going with all their strength to try to save their boat, all these things. And there was a lot of noise. There was a lot of fighting between them. They said that they had already prepared these small boats, the small lifeboats, which are small, which are small harvest calls kayakalach, which I think is a very very cute word. Um, remember, they were fighting the whole night, so that wasn't the Sakana. What was the Sakana? The Sakana was that they saw a big iceberg coming and getting close to them. And it was impossible to turn the boat. But Hashem made a great nace, and when we came to this big par shelled the actual iceberg moved and we were saved. And everyone on the, on the ship became sick from all the, from the tsar and the fear. And, hopefully, and, and they were scared that when they came to America, they would put them in quarantine. Um, I don't know. Hashem Yisbarach helped them and everybody got in. And everybody was fine. Okay, so that is just a little bit more about the life of Rabbi Shmuel Horowitz and we will meet again next week.